Okay, I know what you're thinking. You've got dirt on your nose, by the way. Did you know? Just there. Yes, I know. Look, I don't know what to say. I was in a rush, I picked the wrong color, and I had new lighting that was blinding me while I was applying it. I didn't realize how bad it actually looked until I started editing. But I'm human. I make mistakes. What's life if you can't make fun of yourself for being a dumbass? And I'm not gonna delete two videos just because it looks like I got punched in the nose. So for the sake of this video, just stare at it now. Get it out of your system. I'm giving you permission to look at it. I'm giving you permission to look at it. So hopefully, now that you and this botched nose are well acquainted, we can move on to the true purpose of this video. Let's begin. So it's been like a year. How you doing? Really, it's been a while. It's been a while. I slightly don't remember how to do this. All right, well, let's try this. Hi, my name is Morgan. I'm a self-employed mom. I'm a self-employed mom. No, I'm not an MLM that has lost my femininity over the last four years of being at home. This channel's purpose was to help me re-embrace the femininity that I lost, which is how I found the channel of Anna Bay, which is who we're gonna be reacting to today. But before we get to that, I try to channel like my inner Avril Lavigne. Did I do it? Did I do okay? <laughs> So like I said, I lost my femininity being at home for as long as I have been. So I stumbled across Anna Bay's channel. I have made two reactionary videos previously and they seem to be doing okay for as micro as my channel is. So why not do another one, right? And disclaimer before we get into this. Yes, I know Anna has a very different lifestyle than myself and the people that follow her, that love her, they probably have a different lifestyle or wish to have a different lifestyle than myself. That's fine. Watching her videos, I really do feel like a trash bag. I know that's not her intention. She's just, you know, spewing the elegant tips, but uh, it's really entertaining for a trash bag such as myself to be watching such an elegant portrayal, someone teaching you how to be a lady. I find that extremely entertaining and very fun. So today, oh my god, yikes. Okay, <laughs> I can't, I can't stop laughing because I'm uncomfortable. Okay, so this is the video that we are going to be reacting to today. Look, I'm no prude by any means. Back in my early 20s, I would talk about this subject with my best friends, my roommates. You know, it was just freely talked about. So this topic, I was used to talking about, you know, I don't wanna say on a regular basis, but I wasn't afraid of the topic. But if I don't know you or if it's being talked about publicly, I am slightly uncomfortable. I don't really know why that is. I don't know why this is because I have no issues with it at all. Like I'm not a prude. I'm literally not a prude. I'm trying so hard to convince you. <laughs> I don't even really like watch those kind of scenes if they happen to be in movies and frankly even when I'm watching like The Bachelor like when they're all getting like hot and heavy and stuff like I kind of just like look the other direction or I just like get on my phone for a while because it's just it's just it's not my place to be looking at that. I do sound like a prude huh? Whatever. It is what it is. I just don't want to watch it okay? Do you. I mean do do whatever okay but it, it's there for some people to watch. I just I, I'm uncomfortable watching it. So I'm really uncomfortable um, with the idea of reacting to this video. Oh god, it's a whole 10 minutes. This is, ugh, this is gonna be difficult. Hopefully it's not that bad. Maybe she's done like, she probably has. She's probably done a really, you know, elegant, an elegant way of um, constructing this video. Let's just watch it. My dear elegant ladies, today I'm gonna answer the burning question that I know that many of you have been asking me for so many years which is basically the only reason to why I'm doing this video. But how to have sex like an elegant lady? Because how soon should we do it with a guy? How often is elegant to do it? And last but not least, what is sex etiquette? How do we behave like an elegant lady in between the sheets? <laughs> God, I'm so like, I'm already, I just, I feel so uncomfortable. First off, girl. You looking burnt. You probably been lounging at the beach. You looking extra crispy. Not like I would know. I look like the Pillsbury Doughboy. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, how soon? I agree. I want to know that. I, I want to know her opinion on how soon. Not like that's applicable to my life because I am I am hitched up with child. <laughs> But I'm also very curious to know this information because I want to know, like, I want to know how the elites do it. Well, ladies, I'm going to answer all of those questions. So let's start with 
topic number one. So let's start by talking about how soon is too soon. <laughs> or how long should you wait, basically? And this is the thing that there is no right and wrong, in my opinion. However, we do live in a society where there's plenty of right and wrong for women. So we are going to talk a little bit about that. You see, one thing that I really want to encourage you all ladies is that it all depends when you want to have sex. Do you want to have sex soon? Do you want to wait? If you want to wait, you have the right to wait. And you have the right to wait as long as you want, until you feel comfortable, until you feel like it. You should never just, you know, be a people's pleaser and just do it just because you feel like there's expectations to do so, right? Some ladies might want to have it quite soon. And what do we do in that case? Especially since in most cultures, this is not really appropriate because when a woman gives it away too soon, she is kind of frowned upon. And this is the problem. And you know, I wish we could change a lot of things in our patriarchal society, but unfortunately ladies, this is the way it currently is. In some cultures, like in Sweden or other Scandinavian countries, or even some other parts of the Western society, you will actually have less strict rules for how soon you should be having sex. For this reason, ladies, think about your own culture, how you feel like and when you feel like, and base your own opinion around that. But of course, if you ask me, my personal opinion is that don't just do it too soon because there are a lot of drawbacks. I do believe that um, the female species is more vulnerable in terms of doing it too soon because we can become pregnant and then who looks after the child? You. Let's say the man, you never see him again, but you are going to be kind of stuck there. So for this reason, you need to be very cautious of who you let in to water your flower. I, I want to... That term, water your flower, yikes. In America, it is widely established and acceptable for a woman to proceed to that stage after the third date. She is from Sweden, so apparently they have the same kind of rules, so... Kind of useless commentary on this pause. I was just really uncomfortable with the whole water your flower comment. So let's just keep going. I wouldn't just let any gardener into my garden. I would really be selective of uh, who he is, what he can do for me if, you know, things happen. <laughs> no, but really, this is our instinct, ladies. We need to be selfish. For men, it's easy, but for us, it's a little bit more complicated. So for this reason, we can't just let any other Joe into our garden because there might be consequences after that. Oh, and by the way, we need to also quickly touch upon this myth about if a woman gives it up too soon, no man will ever marry her because she will forever be something something. And I mean, Again, it depends on your culture. You might be in a more conservative culture where indeed the patriarchy society is ruling strong there and that's the norm and that's how people will look at women, unfortunately. But, you know, in modern parts of, uh, let's say, Western society, actually, I know many women who have gotten married and had no problems establishing a long-term relationship with someone that they met and had sex with, let's say, on the first night or on the second date or whatever it is. Is. So I wouldn't say that this is a strict rule. It doesn't mean that, okay, let's say you couldn't hold it back and you did it. It doesn't necessarily mean it's game over, but it's definitely not a strategy I would like to promote. So try and put a lock on that garden until the gardener, he has showed himself worthy enough to come and water your little flower. <laughs> oh, the analogy. Oh God, just, you, I, I don't know. I just wish there was a more adult way she would have said that, but that's just me being nitpicky. I found it interesting, her line where she was like, uh, I need to be a more selective to see what like he could do for me. Um, I'm getting undertones of he better be able to financially support me if he impregnates me. That's that's kind of the vibe I'm getting from her from that particular comment. But I don't disagree with anything that she's saying at this point. I think waiting builds up intensity and suspense. I think that is very beneficial for a relationship in general. I don't disagree with what she says. Just the whole, it's just the ugh. Little flower. Oh, the gardener. Wait for the right gardener. No, no, find another analogy. That's just me. This is just me. This is just me being me. Now let's talk about how often you should be having your sexy time. 
how often is elegant? Is it when you do it too much, does it become less elegant? Well, again, we go back to the most important point is that you only have sexy time when you really want to. This whole thing that, okay, if you're in a relationship or if you're dating somebody, if you're not pleasing him and giving him exactly what he wants, he's gonna leave you or he's gonna stray and go with somebody else and uh, you basically have no choice. And I personally believe that, you know, when you are dealing with men who will cheat on you or leave you just because you're not doing X, Y, Z in the bed or you're not having sex often enough with him, I do believe that either you're dealing with a sex addict or he's just not that into you. So I don't want you ladies to be a sexual doormat. I really want you to only, only do it when you really feel like it, when you really cannot hold it back anymore. That's the right way, in my opinion, of having intimate time in your garden. If you are somebody who wants to have your flower watered pretty much every day and all the time, then of course, again, reminder that we do live in a patriarchal society where men kind of frown upon a highly sexual active woman, especially if she has many gardeners coming and watering her flower shop, you know? <laughs> sorry. sorry, ladies, that was a little bit funny. Okay, sorry. <laughs> okay. Let's say honestly, your libido is very high and that happens. Not everybody is like this or like that. Everybody is different and it's okay as a woman to have a high libido. But the problem is that we cannot let that affect our personal brand. So my advice is do whatever you want behind closed doors. That is your personal business and you have the right to privacy, but you need to really protect your reputation, your personal brand in that sense, because of course, if everybody but around town starts talking about it because let's say you're not being discreet enough. Let's say you're doing it too much in the public or like, you know, you're not necessarily that you're watering your flower in public, but maybe you are making it very obvious, okay? <laughs> then that is something that I would really recommend you to start being mindful about. It's all about discretion. Elegance is discretion. I mean, if you look- I'm just really glad that I'm wearing makeup right now. <laughs> My cheeks are on fire. I'm so uncomfortable. She is being quite vague about her answers. I mean, I didn't expect anything more or less, I guess, but it's kind of like skirting around the question, but also like, it's a very pageant answer, pageantry answer. I don't know how to say that. Get to the affluent community. Oh, you know, there's all kinds of weirdos in, out there, you know, but people are discreet and they're elegant on the surface, and then whatever happens, uh, you know, in, in the bedroom stays in the bedroom. And if rumor starts hitting the town that you're up to all this kind of business, then you know what? You need to start thinking about how to repair that damage because it is repairable. I wouldn't stress too much about it because people are always gonna be talking. Rumors are always gonna be happening, no matter if you're a saint or the devil, you know? But you need to just be mindful of keeping it discreet and then troubleshoot. What is it that you're doing right now that might not be discreet, that might create rumors around town? And also, this is for gentlemen as well. Nobody wants to be Mr. Playboy. I mean, it's just not that elegant anymore. It's kind of just immature. I don't disagree with that. Being seen as a Playboy is no longer a like cool thing. But also, like, don't give yourself up to dicks. <laughs> In my opinion, of the guys that are going to take your flower, in her words, kind of just take that as a trophy and put it on their shelf and then talk to anybody that they can to express their new win on their shelf. It's a very particular type of guy, to be honest with you. Like, if he seems like a bro and like a douche, it's a type, it's a type, it's a type. So if you're attracted to that type, then you're going to put yourself in a very damaging position when it comes to your reputation. I don't really like the way she says brand because that kind of associates this associates your body <laughs> with who you are as a person. I don't agree with that. So I, I don't like the fact that she says brand. Again, nitpicky, just my opinion. Just keep away from the douchebags. They're kind of like just hidden in plain sight. Trust your gut. Let's talk about the gymnastics of how to actually do it in the bed as an elegant lady. Okay, first things first. Hold on, I need a drink. I need, I need, I need another drink before we get to this. Not ready. I'm not ready. Okay. 
though. I think the most elegant way of having sex is to really keep your hygiene fresh because you definitely don't want to be a stinky flower. You want to be a fresh, elegant little flower that you are. And truly, overdo it with your hygiene rather than underdo it. If you are unsure, just do a little bit extra like this. You know that it's all good. I mean, I don't recommend you to have like, you know, three, five showers a day. No, but try to do something like for sure once per day at least, but I don't know, maybe change your underwear more regularly. Maybe apply hair perfume, maybe apply a nice body lotion with your perfume as well. Have a really good deodorant, all those type of things. But those are the basics, but this is just a little reminder. But if we're gonna talk a little bit about the actual technicalities, then I think one thing that you need to really take into account is that there is no such thing as kind of elegance and etiquette once you are in action. Because if you start kind of thinking about, you know, all these, uh, uh, you know, details or do's and don'ts, then you're going to start holding yourself back. And that's really bad because you know what's gonna happen. You're not going to be present. And elegance in bed is all about being as present as you possibly can. It's right there right now. You need to forget your everyday life, disconnect with the other world and just be there with your partner. You need to allow yourself to also connect with your own sensuality, with your most passionate self, because only then are you going to really enjoy it, but also your partner. Be yourself let loose, have fun, don't overthink it. And if you start feeling that, okay, this is not working for me, I'm starting to feel bored, don't ever lay there looking bored because then you're forever going to be a bad lay. Ladies, then just excuse yourself. The same way you would excuse yourself elegantly somewhere else when it's just not working out. You politely remove yourself from the situation instead of just you know, stare up the wall or something like that. And last but not least, don't forget safety first. I'm not gonna give you a little speech like they do in school, but you know what I'm talking about. Always stay safe. If you haven't been tested for any sexual transmitted diseases, then make sure you wear a condom. Excuse yourself. Excuse yourself. E. Ooh, that is an ego punch to whoever you're doing the deed with. I mean, that's why women like fake it. <laughs> That's why it's like, you know, women just fake it. Like they're not, they're not trying to hurt your feelings and be like, oh, you, you suck in bed. Like, I'm, let me just get up and leave. That would be horrible to a person's ego. And frankly, I don't think getting up in the process is going to be beneficial. It's not going to bring them any more knowledge. It's not going to make them better at it by you leaving. Like, it's like, why are you going to hurt their ego? Why are you going to hurt their ego in the middle of it? That's, that's, that's gotta be devastating for a guy. If a girl just like gets up in the middle of it and be like, yeah, this isn't working for me so i'm just gonna get up and leave what <laughs> now of course if he's you know doing something you really dislike then fine i get that just but if it's just like boring you're just gonna hurt his ego if you're bored you're just gonna hurt his ego get up and leave i don't know maybe i'm just i'm like the kind of person that's always worried about someone's feelings but that's just me i mean i'm sure there's some people that just can't get up and leave it seems like a very amy schumer way to go about things but no offense to amy schumer either because i freaking love her you know in my early 20s she was my spirit animal now i'm a little more tame so but I don't disagree with any of her tips. This video was a little more uh, tame than I expected it to be. I don't know what I was expecting. I didn't have any expectations, but I don't know. The title really reeled me in. Well, that's it for this video. If you're wondering why I have magazines behind me, I make handmade collages um, from recycled magazines. So if you're interested in that, I'll have the link down below. I'm also starting up a little crystal business. These are some of just like the smaller pieces that I have. I do have some larger pieces. I do sell them on Poshmark. I also sell clothes on Poshmark. All those links will be linked down below, but um, uh, that's all I have for you right now. We are going to react to another video. I'll be wearing the same outfit, so hang around. I'll have this out in a couple of days. See ya. Bye.